Plex Media Server, think of this as kind of your own homebrewed Netflix. Love it. Wow. Kind of a good way to explain it because we're all familiar with the Netflix interface and how it lays out, you know, you go into comedy and there's all your comedy shows and this kind of stuff. Right. Plex allows you to create your own service so that you can import your own library, mm -hmm. your favorite online shows. If you want to add Category 5 TV, for example, we're going to show you how to do that. You can add your home movies. Yes. That's cool. Your music library. We've Photos. got, we've ripped, absolutely, and we've ripped all of our um, Christmas music this year. And oh, we okay. put it on our Plex. So now we just say, play Christmas music, and it's just a shuffle library of nonstop Christmas. Excellent. Very cool. Commercial free. Uh, Plex is a free piece of software. Now, they do have some commercial components. They do have a subscription service called Plex Pass. Jeff, maybe you can touch on yeah. a little bit of what the advantages of that are. Yeah, so I did not initially sign up for Plex Pass. Mm -hmm. uh, just use regular Plex Media Server. And then about six months in, I decided I want the ability to download. Download? Yeah. So what are you going to download? My files. From but your Plex? Remotely. So you so, can. Well, that's one of the things that comes with Plex Pass. So I signed up for the lifetime subscription. I think it was I don't know 150 bucks or something. Like it was, mm -hmm. but now I'm covered for life. Okay. But it allows me to, on my other Plex devices. So say like my tablet. Sure. I, I can wherever the, you've got the app installed. Right. Your so, laptop, your computer, your tablet, your TV, your Roku. Yes, I could be sitting Amazon Fire in a hotel, TV. and download my files. And so that you them. have a local copy. Yes. Do you have to download it or can you stream Don't it? Don't have to. You can stream it. Okay. Uh, also with Plex Pass comes some of their other additional features. They're, they're always rolling out some cool stuff. I think trailers is one that I would really yes. find appealing. Love to be able to see the trailer before I click on the movie. Yes. Even on my own library. Right. Yep. I love That's that. Good. We're looking through Netflix, Becca and I, my wife, uh, and looking for a new Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. And how do we do it? We bring up the trailers on Netflix. So we bring up the description. Oh, that one sounds interesting. Play the trailer. Mm -hmm. Well, you can do that with a Plex Pass on your, your own Plex server. Yes. It's, it's good. There's a lot of added features. And uh, truthfully, I don't even utilize them all. Sure. Because... But they're there. You've got a lifetime subscription. It's done. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's so good. Plex Media Server itself is absolutely free. Uh, we have installed it and shown how to use it on multiple kinds of devices. Mm -hmm. So go to our website, category5.tv, and simply click search and uh, do a search for Plex, P-L-E-X. And one of the videos that we've done, Jeff and I um, did a tutorial on how to set up Plex Media Server on a Raspberry Pi 3. Yes. Which is how I'm running at home. So keep, keep in mind, that makes the Raspberry Pi 3 your server. And then any device that you use, your tablet, your phone, your computer, your, your Roku, can connect to that and stream the video to your TV or whatever. That's cool. It's so cool. So we've shown those things. Go to our website and do a search for Plex to see those. But tonight we're going to do something a little different, something that we haven't done yet, and that's to show you how to install Plex Media Server. So this is the server component on your Windows machine. Okay. Now, you may have a Windows machine that's always on, and if you do, we can treat that as our server. And yes. that's the one that all of our other devices in the house will connect to and be able okay. to stream video from. Um, in addition to that, our Plex channel has been updated to version 1.9. Now, that's okay. a big leap for us. We're going to show you tonight how to download and install that on your brand new Plex Media Server. All right. So, Let's hello to the chat room. I see you up here on my laptop, but I'm going to have to minimize you, my friends. <laughs> Bringing up a new tab, and in order to get Plex, again, it's free. We're just going to go to Plex. I'm going to bring up my screen just so that you've got it. Plex.tv slash downloads, just like that. All right, so I mentioned that you can install this on multiple kinds of devices. One of the things I need to mention as well, you can in fact install Plex Media Server on your NAS. Yes. Think about that for a moment. If you've got a smart NAS, you can install Plex on that and then your NAS itself becomes the server. I have it installed in, on uh, Unraid, on my Unraid server. Mm -hmm. So I've got eight hard drives in my server and I've got a massive library and it's amazing. And you've got the power of that, of that server as well. So now that I'm at the download page, I'm one step closer to awesome. I just click on download and it skims me down here. I'm running Windows right now so it automatically detected that, but check this out. 
Mac, Linux, FreeBSD, Synology, Netgear, QNAP. These are NASA's QNAP. Unray, Drobo, Asustor, Asustor, Trekus. Now we're getting into the obscure ones, folks. The ones that nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> uh, we're moving along. Seagate, we've heard of them. Uh, Western Digital, hard drive manufacturer, TerraMaster, and then other Docker. Let's Hello. Talk. Docker's like a um, uh, kind of like a virtualization platform, but really it's like sharing resources on a Linux architecture. Oh, okay. So those who use it know what it is, how it works. Um, we, today, for the sake of the demo, are on Windows. So we're just going to download that. As simple as this, boom. Again, it's free. And I'm going to click to open that. So that's going to take seven, five, four, because Windows knows countdowns. Three, <laughs> three minutes, three minutes? Yeah, about that. Yeah. Little blue. Two minutes? Little blue wheel starting <laughs> to slowly go around. Uh, we can we'll laugh about it. So as that downloads, we're going to take a very, very quick break. When we come back, we're going to install Plex. We're going to get it set up. And then we're going to put our, you know, Category 5 TV Plex channel on our Plex server so that we can watch Category 5 from anywhere Plex. on our devices. Check it out. We'll be right back. Jeff Weston, Yaman. you're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? Just because Jeff is confused doesn't mean you have to be. Visit cat5.tv slash dreamhost to sign up for unlimited web hosting for your website with unlimited email accounts, MySQL databases, the latest version of PHP, WordPress, and more, and even a free domain name registration. It's less than $6 per month, so sign up today. cat5.tv slash dreamhost. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. The download is complete, and we are ready to install Plex Media Server on our Windows machine. Now, there's really not a lot of options here. Where do you want to install it to? I'm just happy with the default, and we're going to go install. Are you sure you want to install this? Why, yes. Thank you for asking, Windows. <laughs> be ironic if you said no in the middle of the show. Yeah, that's the end. <laughs> Why isn't it working? <laughs> so this is installing all of the components for Plex Media Server, and wow, is it done already? So is it? Yeah, apparently. So let's see what it, what it does. Uh, when I click on Launch, it's most likely going to bring up my web browser because Plex is, in fact, a web browser-based utility on right. your computer. I mean, you're not going to uh, install a program from a computer in order to access it. You're just going to access it through your web browser. It's as simple as that. Uh, didn't bring, didn't launch anything. Let's try 127.0.0.1 colon. And then the port, the default port for Plex is always 32400 and then slash web. And it is there. It's running. Look at that. Beautiful. My dashboard is empty. Oh. Now, I can add a library and I can say this is movies and I can say this is movies and I like to say movies drama or movies sci-fi and I like to organize myself that way so that everything is kind of together and then I can click next and I can browse for media if you're not sure how Plex Media Server works from that end of things go back and watch our Pi episode mm -hmm. Right. Um, in, uh, it's Plex Media Server for Raspberry Pi 3 you can google it you can go onto our website category5.tv pardon me and search it there and you will find it so, what we're interested in tonight is getting Category 5 TV to work on Plex. So, people are asking, hey, how can I do that? How can I get Plex installed on, or how can I get Category 5 TV installed on my Plex server without having to download, you know, through an RSS feed and get all the files downloaded locally? And, you know, that takes up a massive amount of space. So, here's how we do it, folks. You ready for it? Category5.tv slash subscribe. This is where you go for any of your platforms that you want to use for uh, Category 5 TV shows. You can break it down by show, or you can get the consolidated feed if you want the uh, RSS feeds. We've got audio, we've got low quality, SD and HD, uh, and so on. So, but here, we're here for Plex. 
We've got Roku and Cody as well. Let's get our Plex plug-in. Now, I'm going to walk you through how to do this because it's a little complex for somebody who's never done this before. I want to show you how to obtain it, how to install it, how to get it up and going. So this is called GitHub, and this is where we code the Plex channel. So you'll see, you know, here it says three days ago it was updated. So you know that, hey, this is, this is more recent than the one I installed three weeks ago. So we click on clone or download, and then we go download zip. And that's going to download our channel, and it's extremely small, so it's going to be really, really quick to download. There it is. It's done. And now show in folder is what I'm clicking on, but basically it's in my downloads folder. And now I'm going to right-click on it in Windows and go extract all similar process on Linux or Mac or wherever you are. So now there's a folder called category5.tv-master. First of all, I want to go into that because I see that there's a redundant copy of that folder within that folder. So we're going to actually work on this one. Go into that and you see, oh, those are the files. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right here, now the dash master has been added by GitHub. This is a known thing, and if you read the Plex manual, it'll tell you you've got to remove that. So we remove the dash master so that it is now called category five dot or yeah, category five dot bundle. And that's the naming algorithm for Plex. So then I'm gonna cut that folder. Now I'm ready to move this into my Plex plugins folder. It's going to be located at different places depending on your platform, but here on Microsoft Windows, it's nice and easy to find. I'm going to simply uh, go into my address bar up here at the top and type percent local app data percent. Okay, hit enter, and this is the local application data for all of my installed applications, and I see one now called Plex Media Server, which I can enter. Within that folder, I see plugin support and plugins. The folder I want to enter is called plugins. You'll see there is something called service bundle. Before I paste, I want to show you in Plex what we're actually doing. If I click on channels, I want you to be able to see the difference. You see that there are no channels installed. So now back there, I'm going to right click and go paste. And so now within my Plex Media Server slash plugins folder, I've got category 5 dot bundle. And if I enter that, it's not another folder. It is actually the content of the GitHub repository. Uh, you can also use Git if you want, so that you can just do a git pull and it will automatically update to the latest version. That's a good idea if you know how to do that, but we're showing you the kind of the novice entry level way of doing this so that it's nice and easy. So now that I've pasted that into the correct folder, I should be able just to simply refresh my browser with F5 in the channels folder here on Plex. And lo and behold, we have one channel installed. It's in fact syncing to our channel right now. That's why it took a moment for the, for the icon to come up. If I go back home, click on channels, now I see it's instant, right? Click on it, and there we go. So we've got Category 5 Technology TV, the newsroom, new every day, the pixel shadow, scratch coding for kids, uh, nature sounds, we've got shorter clips, and watch live. So watch live, obviously, during a live show, you can use that. If you want to go shorter clips, you can see um, shortened clips, like little seven-minute segments instead of the full one hours. These are great so that you can just kind of skim through the content if you've missed a couple of shows and you want to see what's going on, uh, or if, you've, if you want to share it with somebody as well. Category 5 Technology TV, obviously our full-length show, so these are like one hour plus. Uh, and this goes back, you know, you can, you can go back. How far can we go? Bum, 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 bum. There we go, just scroll, scroll, scroll. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours yeah. of free <laughs> HD video content. So cool. You can plax and chill. Uh, amazing. <laughs> wow, Jeff. Just wow. <laughs> so here's last week's episode. So if I just simply click on that, you'll see that uh, it shows me the description. It gives me a little bit of info about it. And then I can hit play. And we go back in time. Uh, by a week. <laughs> oh, we my go. goodness. Look at my hair. I am so much older than I was then. Our camera this week looks way better. Yes, it does. So you can go full screen. That and we look better. Yeah, it's, it's us. <laughs> I'm going to just mute the sound here because I don't want you to have to hear it and us at the same time. But there you go. So that's actually streaming to Plex, to my Plex media server, to my browser, right. and, and I'm able to access that. Now, in our scenario tonight, I've installed and am accessing Plex from the very same computer, Microsoft Windows installed and, and so on. Now, all I need is the IP address of that laptop or my computer that is now running Plex Media Server. Right. And from any other device on my network, I can connect to that URL. So the IP address, colon, 
32400 right. slash web. And now I've got the Plex interface and I can stream to that. That so I, is awesome. A computer connected to your 4K TV? Perfect. Nice. Good times. An app installed on your phone? Good times. Nice. I'm the guy saying nice this week. <laughs> yeah, you are. Nice. I said it once already. There you have it, folks. So that is Plex Media Server with our channel installed on a Windows system. Check it out. Let us know what you think. We'd love to field your questions. We'd love to know how you're enjoying our channel as well as your just Plex in general. Remember, go back, watch the Raspberry Pi one because we get into more details about how to add your library and things yes. like that. And just play around with it. Have fun. It's cool. It's non-destructive. So you can add your library, your home movies, and it's, you know, create descriptions. It's, it's a database on that computer which you can back up and, you know, it's fantastic. It's your own homebrew Netflix. Check it out. Plex.tv.